This is me after I finally got an Oracle database running on my M1 MacBook. And in this video, I'll show you step by step how to set it up, what commands to run, and even how to connect to the database with an SQL editor. We're going to set up an Oracle database using Docker. The only thing you'll need for this video is to have Docker installed. I won't show you how to do that in this video, but fortunately it's a simple process that you can follow from the Docker website. Just make sure you select the Apple chip version, otherwise you'll get errors later. Once you have Docker installed, run it. You should see the Docker icon in the system tray at the top of the window. Let's get started. The first step is to download the Oracle database. To do this, go to the link in the description, or you can go to oracle.com, click resources on the top menu, then click on developer downloads. You'll see this software downloads page. Scroll down to the database section and click on Database Enterprise Standard Editions. You'll then see the Oracle database software downloads. Scroll down about halfway down the page and you'll finally see some links to download Oracle database. The version we want is for Linux ARM because our Macs have an ARM processor. This is the file we want here. It's a 2.2 gigabyte download, so it may take some time. Right now it shows version 19C, even though the latest is 23C. This is because 19C is the only version currently compatible with the ARM processors, but that should be good enough for us. Click on the zip link here. You'll see a pop-up. On the pop-up, click the checkbox to accept the license agreement. Then click the download button. You'll be taken to the Oracle account login page. Creating an account is free and one of the requirements of downloading the database. If you have an account, you can log in with that already. If not, create an account and proceed. Once you log in, a save dialog box will appear, asking you where you want to save the Oracle database file that you clicked to download earlier. Choose a location to save the file. I'll just save mine in the downloads folder because in a later step we'll be moving this file. You can leave the default file name. Click save and wait for the file to be downloaded. While that file is downloading, we can start the next step, which is cloning a specific Oracle repository on GitHub. This means we copy the GitHub repository onto our computer. Why do we do this if we just downloaded the database? Well, it's because the next step will involve creating a new Docker image using the Oracle database file that we just downloaded. This GitHub repository makes it easy for us to do that. Building an image is pretty straightforward as you will see shortly. First, we'll clone the repository. To do this, open the terminal application. Navigate to the folder on your computer that stores any current GitHub repositories. If you don't have any, you can navigate to whatever folder you like, such as something within your documents folder. I'll navigate to this database star folder, which I have already set up for other development work. I'll do this using the cd command. Your command may look different, such as cd documents. Now we are in this folder, the next thing to do is clone the repository, which will make a copy of the Oracle repository on our computer. We do this using the git clone command and specify a location of the Oracle repository. Run this command. You can copy it from the description of this video if you don't want to type it out. After a few moments, the command will complete. You'll then have a range of folders and files within the current folder. Once the database has finished downloading, you'll need to move it to a specific location. So go to where you downloaded the file and copy it by clicking on it and pressing Command C. Next, we need to navigate to the folder where that GitHub repository was created. For me, I'll go to BB, then GitHub Repos, then Database Star. There should be a new folder called Docker Images. Open this folder. Open the folder Oracle Database, then Single Instance, then Docker Files, then 19.3.0. Paste the downloaded file here. You can move the file instead of copying it by pressing Option Command V. The folder should now look like this. Don't unzip the file, just leave it as a zip file. Now that the file is copied, we can build a new image from it. To do this, go back to the terminal. You should still be within the directory that you cloned the repository into. We need to move into one of the directories, which is the one above where we just placed that large zip file. 
So use the cd command again and change into the docker files folder here. It's in docker images, then oracle database, then single instance. Don't change into the 19.3.0 folder, just the docker files folder. Next, we run this build command. This is a shell script created by Oracle to make it easy to create a new image. Here is the command. The dot and slash at the start will allow you to execute a script in the current folder. The build container image.sh is the name of the script. The dash v lets you specify the database version to build, which we have then specified as 19.3.0. This ensures the script looks into that folder we just saw to find the zip file. The dash e means it will create an image based on the enterprise edition, which we just downloaded. So run this command. This should build the image, which may take a few minutes. If you get an error like bash build container image not found, make sure you have the dot and slash at the start. If you get an error like cannot connect to the docker daemon, it could be because docker isn't running. Open docker from spotlight or from the applications folder. Once the image is created, your terminal should look like this. You can see a list of images by running docker images. This will show the image you just created. Now we need to run a container based on this image, which means the database is running. To do this, we run the docker run command. The command is quite long, so I've added it to the video description for you to copy and paste. Here is the command. We start with docker run. The dash D means run it in detached mode, which means we can access this terminal when the container is running. The dash dash name allows us to specify a name for our new container, which we have then specified as Oracle 19. You can change this if you like, but Oracle 19 is simple and easy. Notice that the name parameter has two dashes. Make sure it has two when you run the command, otherwise you'll have issues. Next, we have the dash E parameter which allows us to specify a range of environment variables or other parameters specific to the Oracle database. The next parameters include the Oracle PWD, which is the password you will set for the sys and system accounts. You can change this if you like, but just remember it as you'll need it to connect to the database. Next is the dash P, which specifies the port number. The port number is 1521, and it's mentioned twice because one is opening the port from within the container and the other is connecting from outside the container. It's easier if this is the same port. I've read that the default port is 1521, so you can omit it, but I tried that and had errors connecting, so I think it's better to specify this port parameter. Finally, we have the name of the image here, which is the Oracle database, then the tag of 19.3.0-ee. Run this command. It will show a string of characters in the terminal, which is the ID of the container. The container is now starting up. We can check the status by running the docker ps command. We can see a list of containers here. In the status column, we can see how long the container has been running for, as well as the status. It currently says starting. When it's ready, it should change to healthy, which for me took about five to six minutes. You can keep running the docker ps command to get an update. You should also be able to see the container in the docker app here. You can click on the name of the container to see a log of activities being performed. Once it is finished, it should say database is ready. The status in Docker should also say healthy. Our database is now running. Let's connect to it. I'll be using VS Code with the new SQL developer extension as it's the future of Oracle's SQL editor. You can follow the same directions in other editors such as SQL developer. Click on the button here to create a new connection. Next, enter the details to connect. These are the details that worked for me, and I think it's the most confusing part of getting the database set up. For hostname, enter localhost. For the port, enter 1521. For the service name, enter orclcdb. This is the container database. If you're unfamiliar with the concept of container and pluggable databases, check out my video here. For the role, select sysdba. For the username, enter sys. For the password, enter the password you provided in the docker run command earlier. For me, I used the value of my password 1, so I'll enter that. 
For the connection name, enter a name you want for the connection. I'll enter Oracle 19C CDB so I know what version and that it's the container database. Now click test connection and cross your fingers. Hopefully it will say the connection is successful. If so, click on create connection and the connection will be saved. If you get an error message, there are a range of ways to solve it, depending on the error. I've got a few posts I've written on this, which I'll link to in the description. So take a look there to see if that will help. And read through the comments on this video as other people may have a similar error and have a solution there. Assuming the connection is okay, right click on the connection name and click connect. Once it is connected, right click on the connection and select open new SQL file. You'll see a new tab here. I can run a simple select sysdate query and see the current date here on the database, which shows it has worked. This is great. We now have an Oracle database running on an M1 Mac, which is something we've never been able to do. If you want to connect to the pluggable database, the steps are pretty similar. Create a new connection using the button on the left panel. Enter a name for the connection, such as Oracle 19C PDB. The rest of the connection details are all the same, except for the service name. Enter the name of PDB, which is ORCL PDB1. Then test the connection. It should be successful. You can now save the connection and work with the pluggable database. If you get connection errors with the pluggable database, there is a workaround, which involves connecting to the container database and then switching to the pluggable database. First, connect to the container database. We can see we are in the container database by running this select command here, which I've also added to the video description. Next, we can change to the pluggable database by running this alter session command. We should now be in the pluggable database. Run the same select statement as before and we can see the pluggable database name here. We can now work on the pluggable database. If you have any idea how to resolve this error when connecting to the pluggable database, or if I've gotten something wrong when trying to connect, let me know in the comments below. We saw how to connect to the database in the new extension for VS Code. If you want to learn more about it, watch this video next which will show you how to download it and see many of its features. Thanks for watching.